Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> Happy St. Patrick's Day. This is a time when, as I said earlier, everyone in the world gets a chance to be Irish for a day. Everything is about green. The city of Chicago will probably dye their river green again. Everybody has to have their little piece of green. In order to avoid getting pinched, I often think that somebody who, one of two motivations, they either like to pinch people to come up with this, or they just wanted to make sure everybody remembered the Irish heritage in order to have them wear green. Now, for us, it's not a feast day or even a lesser feast. In some Lutheran traditions, St. Patrick is a day of commemoration because we know very little about him. There are only two letters that are known to be by his hand. And the common string of all the different uh, stories that are associated with him, what's commonly accepted is around age 14 or 16, he was kidnapped and carted off to Ireland. And then six years later, he went back, got educated in the line of his family and became a priest and then went back to Ireland in order to share the gospel because of his love of the gospel and his love of the Irish people. He and others of that time frame, we're talking around the 400s or so, all of them brought the gospel to many places, including Ireland. Today's gospel lesson, the people they brought those gospel let that gospel lesson to are the lost. People who have no clue about who Jesus is and what he did for them. But the lost in today's text is a little bit different. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. What a powerful accusation for Jesus to throw at the Jewish leaders of his day. You are not of God? These are the priests and the leaders of God's promised people. How could they be not of God? Ouch! He's saying to them, you are lost. Not lost as those to whom St. Patrick and other missionaries go to share the gospel with. Lost with the gospel right in front of them. Speaking to them. He's talking to the leaders God's chosen people there. They are obstinate, self-righteous, and he calls them out on it. This obstinance leads to being lost. Trusting in our own works, trusting in our own knowledge, leads to being lost, leads to being not of God. We too struggle with not hearing things that are plain and right in front of us about God's truth. We struggle with thinking that we know better. We struggle with deceiving ourselves into thinking that we could do something that would be pleasing enough for us to get to God. How can we know that we are not just as lost as these to whom Jesus is speaking in our text today? Those of whom Jesus said, you are not of God? As we answer that, let's go to Matthew chapter 7. A similar text that would tug at our heartstrings as well. Verses 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. When you talk about doing God's will, keep faith in the background, not works. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. The key is knowing who is doing the verbs. If you ask 
any Lutheran, when were you saved? The answer should be 2,000 years ago on a cross. We shouldn't cite a specific day upon which we were saved unless it's the day that we were saved by the one who saved us, not by any act that we took on ourselves. And when asked, how do you know that? How can you be sure? We can say with confidence, saving faith was placed in our heart by the Holy Spirit at our baptism. Saving faith from the Holy Spirit, not something I took a hold of, but which was given to me. Grafting me into Jesus' family tree. Making me part of His eternal family. Jesus tells me this when He absolves me through the person that He called to speak those words of absolution. Jesus does this in, with, and under bread and wine which are his flesh and blood, providing for me nurturing faith and forgiveness. His gifts, doing and delivering the very things that he says his gifts deliver. I am but a humble, passive, contrite recipient of these gifts. Listen again to those to whom Jesus was speaking in that text from Matthew again. And the focus on who's doing the verbs. On that day, many will say, Lord, Lord, did we? Did we? They're talking about what they've done. Did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name? And do many mighty works. They're not talking about what Christ did for them. They're talking about what they thought they were doing for Christ. Not in response, but an act in order to receive something, almost like a contract. Who's doing the verbs? They are pointing to the wrong doer. Do not point to or trust in your own works. Don't point to, don't trust in, have faith in anything but Christ. Those works will logically flow from those of us who are redeemed because in response we will do those things, but they're not to get something. You, you cannot mess up the crucifixion because you didn't do it. Your baptism was done to you. It connects you to his death and his resurrection. <coughs> you do not have to worry about if you properly are saved. You don't have to worry about if you did it right because you didn't do it. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death, is in our gospel text. Eternal life is ours, just like it is for those who have faith in God's promises. Have, a present tense, per, per, previous, past, it's, it's an all-inclusive have. Because God who created you, created time and functions without being a slave to that time which he created. So that the communion of saints includes all who are saved for all time from beginning to end. Adam and Eve, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Elijah, and you and me are all part of those who trusted in God's promises before they came to pass and have faith in them once they came to pass. All of those are connected to the cross. But the lost do not get this timeless act that Jesus speaks of in our gospel text. The timeless nature of God and his promises. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Again, keeps my word is connecting to trusting in God's promises, having faith. You are greater than our father. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? They asked. And the prophet died, prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? In the men's Bible study yesterday, for the last few weeks we've been starting with something called the baloney shot. 
Uh, Lutheran Our Ministries, previous executive pastor, uh, does this series. And he showed a couple of interesting things in this little baloney shop clip. A piece of graffiti from just decades after Christ that showed a depiction of a man on the cross with the head of a donkey and words depicting how ridiculous it is to believe in such a ridiculous figure. The person who scribbled that graffiti and the people who laughed at it are all gone. The emperor by the name of Diocletian also put up a pillar, a monument to, to himself for having wiped out Christians in Christianity. Many people don't even know that Diocletian ever even existed. But Christianity is alive and well today. Who's still here? Who's still alive? And who's long gone? And not just Christ, but all who are in Christ will never suffer the second death, the spiritual death. So when Jesus says, your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day, he saw it and was glad. Abraham's faith in God's promise keeps him alive eternally, like all who are in the communion of saints. So he saw it and was glad. It being Jesus' day, Easter day, and his eventual return as well when he restores all of his creation, the new heavens and the new earth, Scripture speaks of. So the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and you have seen Abraham? They just don't get it. But it was clear to them who he was claiming to be with these words. Jesus said to, him, to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. I am. A very powerful statement. One that is very many times in this gospel. I am. Anytime those Jewish leaders would have heard this I am, it would have been ringing in their ears. The same sort of I am that came from the burning bush. That's who he was claiming to be. This explains their response, a very quick one. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. He whisks us away just as he, from eternal death, just as he whisks himself away from the temple. He disappeared for a time because it was not his time. We had a very interesting presentation on things happening in accord with their time last week. It wasn't his time yet. The time was soon to come. A time when he would redeem all of mankind. His time and promise fulfills. Every time his name is spoken, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as water is applied to another lost soul, marking us as his own. marking us as his own child, killing us on the cross with him to raise us on Easter with him. And on that faithful day of his eventual return, in Jesus' name, amen.